What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another superstar from the world of mixed martial arts. Today we get to talk to Grant Dawson, who sports a 19-1-1 record. We're going to zero in on that, by the way. He's coming up against Demir Ismagulov, 24-2. They are the co-main event at an upcoming fight night. It's Strickland versus Magomedov. In the main event, these cats are the co-main event. That's a nice one-two punch, folks. Welcome back, KGD. How are you? I'm fantastic, man. I think I uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Awesome. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on. Your arm's going to get tired from holding the phone because we're going to talk rankings. Let's start off with rankings. How are you number 15 in the UFC rankings? Just so you know, in the USA Today Sports slash MMA Junkie rankings, you're number, uh, what do you got? Eight, eight or nine. Yeah, you're up there, man. Eight. Man, that that's that's pretty cool. Uh, I I get where it's coming from in the sense that I haven't uh, I haven't beat a lot of ranked guys. I haven't beat any of the ranked guys yet, so I think that's kind of where where they're heading. But I do feel like I don't get enough credit. I've beat uh, Mike Trezano, which was an Ultimate Fighter winner. I beat Leonardo Santos, who was undefeated in the UFC. I beat uh, Mark Madsen, who was a silver medalist and undefeated uh, in MMA. I feel like I've done a lot of things that kind of just get overlooked. And and it, it, it is frustrating. It, it's frustrating, but uh, it's all part of the game. Yep, and I see finishes <laughs> here, too. I see triangle chokes, punches, rear naked choke, hammer fists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, seriously, like, this, this is something that's glaring, folks. As much uh, heat as the judges catch every weekend, you know, criticism, every once in a while, a ref, um... Or every once in a while, an Irish superstar punching a mascot. The UFC rankings panel has to catch some heat. This is just horrific. I've been doing rankings for our website for the last 10 years. Haven't missed a week. And you ask, Grant, well, perhaps it's this, perhaps it's that. No, There is no perhaps when you're 19-1-1, one, and one, 701 in the UFC. Could be 8-0-1 if we throw in uh, contenders. And yeah, maybe early on you weren't fighting the higher ranked fighters, but you're still winning, right? And so you take bigger steps as you climb the ladder. And then Mark Madsen, you gave him his first L, if I'm not mistaken. You mentioned that. That right there starts to catapult you even more. They are off. You're getting screwed, my friend, uh, by those that, that panel. Yeah, one of, one of the things that kind of bugs me about it too is I feel like the – so I was on the first season – of the contender series and mm -hmm. I've got the best record uh, other than Sean O'Malley. Of course, I've got the best record of anybody to come off the contender series that far back. And I've beaten uh, out of my 19 wins. I've only got two decisions and that's, that's overall, that's not just you like out of all of my wins, two decisions. That's it. I'm a finisher. And I know I'm not, I don't throw spin kicks and, and jump flying backwards, upside down kicks. And I think that's one of the reasons why I don't get a whole lot of recognition. But, man, I'm a finisher, dog. And, and I come out there to put on a pace. So we have to make sure here <laughs> that you also don't get caught in that circle that once was occupied by Tony Ferguson, uh, Rafael Asunza, current, or recently Benil Dariush. Bilal Muhammad, where you had this impressive streak and you're not able to get to a title shot. You know what I mean? Like, we have to do something about that because that's going to come up next. Even Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen won 10 fights in a row before he even got a whiff at the top fighters. Of course, it didn't go his way, but, you know, he he he, he wasn't he wasn't a bum. That's for sure. He proved he wasn't a bum. So, you know, now Isma Gula, talented kid as well. You know, impressive record, but some somehow we gotta build up the profile of this fight, you know what I mean? Because this 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 is an important fight. Yeah, I think this is one of the 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 key fights in the lightweight division. I think that I was just talking about this earlier. I think finally, after all these years, the top five guys are gonna stop fighting each other. We saw Fazeev fight Gaethje. Um, now that Benil Dariush and uh, uh, Charles Oliveira just fought, I think Charles will probably get um, another title shot. I think the loser of Dustin versus Gaethje will get somebody coming up. And then I think uh, Benil Dariush, who we know will fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. He's not scared of anyone. I think he's going to end up getting somebody that is 
higher ranked, like like your Gamrocks or or myself. So I, I do think that the division is finally starting to kind of clear itself up, which I'm super excited about. And what I was saying before we got on was I think RDA needs to be taken out of the rankings. I think he's an amazing fighter. I think if he still fought at lightweight, he should be top five. But he doesn't fight at lightweight anymore. I think you should take him out of there and get Tiago Moises or or maybe even put Drew Dober back in. Yeah, RDA definitely is a problem <laughs> for anyone that he fights. He's a stud, much respect, former champ, two division standout because he did well as a as a welterweight as well. His last fight was at welterweight, and his next fight is at welterweight. And I think we're gonna have to take a good look at that as well. I'm speaking on behalf of USA Today Sports and MMA Junkie to make a good point. Now, what you know, usually the ranking panels. I, I can't speak on behalf of UFC. I can on behalf of us. We'll look at your last. Three years seems to be the the sweet spot, you know, like where you really are and what you've done. In three years, usually most people have five fights, six fights, somewhere around there. Um, and granted, pro, uh, how about that? Granted, uh, prior to that, he did have two lightweight fights. You know, he carries a lot of stock. Once you're a former champion, you carry a lot of stock. But, yeah, you are behind him there. Uh, you're behind Favola. As well, I don't want to disrespect him. He had a nice fight as well, but yeah, 15 is just glaring as shit. I, I guess I'll change the subject, um, but 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 again, I'm I'm seeing something that bugs me, and that's fighters that have a good record aren't being rewarded. You know, because this is really really quite a resume, brother. I used to tell people if you're 80 percent wins, you're a problem. You're a problem for somebody. You're good. You know, you you have. You have a career in the UFC for as long as you want. If you're winning nine out of ten fights, holy cow, like your championship material, and that's the percentile you're at. Yeah, man. Uh, it, I just think it's one of those things where maybe my my breakthrough fight just hasn't come yet. And I think a part of it, too, is it's so hard to find me competition. Not, not competition. It's hard to find me fights sometimes because my when July 1st comes along, my last fight will have been nine months ago. So there's a long time in between. I felt like I had a lot of momentum after the Madsen fight. And then it just kind of fell off because, you know, you had Favola getting his big knockout over Drew Dober, which was super impressive. And then you got like these guys that are they're continuously fighting. And so it's kind of easier to keep them in your mind than it is somebody like me. So after Madsen, you were relatively healthy. You could have you could have been fighting this whole time. Or did you have anything that prevented you from fighting until July? From November I, fought, to today. I fought Mark Madsen on November 5th. I got yeah. married on November 20th and I asked for a fight November 21st and it just kind of just didn't happen. And then it, there, there was like short, ridiculous short notice stuff that they kind of offered where it was like, Hey, do you want to fight this guy on a week's notice? And it's like, guys, I took a short notice fight in my last fight and I missed weight. And I got a lot of heat on that, which at, as I should a hundred percent, if you miss weight, there are no excuses, but I can't be taking short notice fights in other countries and and missing weight again and then making that you know making myself look bad i have to be smart there and people are like well why don't you keep your weight down of course i'm trying to keep my weight down keeping your weight down and being two weeks out from a fight is completely different exactly that's how you talk to someone who's won one in 19 not 19 one and one come on ufc matchmakers get your act together um so, okay, and then th this is a question where I'm going to look you straight in the eye here, all right, Grant? Don't mess around. Are you in the doghouse or something, or, or or what's going on? Like, do you have a good relationship with the UFC? Because, you know, it, it seems like you're everything they're looking for. I mean, you, you communicate well. It's not like you struggle to express yourself. Uh, I don't think I'm in the doghouse. I don't think that they're mad at me. I think it was just one of those situations where they – they expected something out of me and I, I, I fumbled the ball. I, I made the mistake. I, I, I took a fight and I, I knew it was going to be super close on making the weight. I truly in my heart of hearts believed that I was going to be able to make the weight and it just was not my night. And I, I made a call. I thought if I keep cutting weight, I'm going to end up going to the hospital and it's better to miss weight and the fight still happen than to not go to weigh-ins and the fight not happen because I'm going to the hospital. So I, I made a call. I did the best that I could do. Um, again, I'm not blaming the UFC. I'm not blaming you know anybody. It, it was my mistake, and I, I, I hold myself to that standard. This fight, I've had a full camp. The weight cut's easy. 
I, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make weight the night before. So I'm really excited to be able to make the weight and then put on a performance against somebody that is in the top 15. That will get me what I think I deserve next. <clears throat> you know, lost in the shuffle too, Grant, is the fact that we interview you before every fight. So technically we're your good luck charm, but you're welcome for that. And then my question is, in a perfect world, at the end of this year, where do you think you stand? Well, uh, first off, I got to beat Demir, and I think that a big win over him, and especially a finish over him, which is what I'm aiming for, definitely expecting this to go three rounds, but obviously if I can get him out of there, I think that's going to catapult me a uh, in front of a couple of people. Um, my plan is to fight somebody in the top 10 by December. So I beat Demir, I get ranked top 12, maybe a little bit higher, maybe top 11, and then I go for somebody in the top 10. I'm thinking uh, Benil Dariush. I know that the Chandler and Connor fight isn't happening. So if you know the UFC wants me to keep Chandler warm, that'll be something that I'm very interested in as well. However, Demir has my undivided attention right now. You know, if you look over his record, it's pretty impressive too. Um, if you were to look at his, his last loss, <clears throat> is there anything, do you feel like there was anything um, maybe just off about that night? Or do you think he was exposed a little bit like what did you get out of watching that last fight man i don't i don't think he was exposed and uh he keeps telling he keeps telling people that he was sick that night that that he had health issues and i believe him i i i absolutely believe him however if we believe him that he was sick that night and now he's healthy and now he's you know a hundred percent the outcome of this fight there's no excuses so if he's a hundred percent which i believe he is we go in there and I beat him. There's no excuses after that. So I'm expecting the best Demir is Magulov, but I think that just stylistically, I'm a bad matchup for him. What do you think in particular in your game within the fight uh, stands out over some of your other colleagues? I think that my control on the ground is different. Um, I, I feel like my striking is definitely coming along, training at American Top Team. I've got some new secrets that I've been working on striking-wise that I think you're going to see in this fight. But the main thing is always going to come down to once I get a takedown, I've banked around. Once I get the, get the fight to the ground, you've lost this round. Don't get finished. Good luck next round. I like that. I like hearing fighters with IQ talk because we have a lot of fighters with low fighter IQ that cost themselves fight and me money. Um, so I'm glad to hear that, that, that you are thinking that way. You know, this whole thing about the judges, whatever opinion we have about the judges, those same judges are going to be judging your fight. They're going to be judging the fight this weekend. They're going to be judging UFC 290 the following <clears throat> week. They're not moving the judges. So we got to work around the scoring criteria and However, it is that we think that maybe the judges are looking at it, applying it, or something this way or that way. So I like that you have a good head on your shoulders. By the way, if you're curious, you win this next fight. I don't see why you're not number six in the UFC uh, the UFC rankings. Think about it. All of them have taken one L. You've yet to take that one. You, you took a draw, but no L. And you back it up with 19 wins, and you're finishing. Like, uh, uh, you know, again, man, rankings is my thing. That's my passion. So that's why I'm spending so much time on it. Blink twice if you want me to move on to another talk topic. Because <laughs> I can talk about this one all day. But yeah, dog, I, I, I don't hey, think... Dog, talk me up in the number two spot, man. Start telling people. Like, let's go. I show Take up. I'm going to look at the Dawson. rankings tomorrow. And because of this interview, I'm going to be like number three in the world. Take it easy, Grand Dawson. We can get you to six. <laughs> but then once we get you there, you hey. got to be one of those top five guys. But 15 to six is quite the jump. Hey, you get me to six, I'll get to number one. There you go. There you go. There you go. Grand Dawson joining us here on the Junkie Radio program. Damir Ismagulov, his opponent. Great co-main event that's coming up, folks. Uh, you got to check it out. So you're basically at the point now where these are the hardest workouts in about, what, a couple of weeks you start tapering down or maybe one more week or something like that? Yeah, uh, this has been a really long camp. This has been definitely a very, a very, very intense camp, and we've hit the point where – uh, it's less volume, but more intensity. So my, I'm not doing, you know, two a days every single day. There are days that I train twice a day, but it, it's more really hard in the morning and then a lighter workout at night where towards the beginning of camp, it's a really hard in the morning, hard one at night. And then, uh, and then a couple of days of rest, but 
I trust my coaches, man. I, I don't really have a say in what I do. I don't really have a say in who I'm sparring or, or what my schedule looks like. That's up to my coaches. My coaches, Mike Brown and uh, Tiago Alves. I've been with them for two fights now. This will be my third fight. This is the first time we've had a full camp together. And I'm really excited to see just the improvements that I've made. You know, we covered <clears throat> Tiago Alves back in the day. This was a big welterweight. You know, he was solid. Sometimes he struggled a little bit. You know, he had a couple of close calls, some misses. He made the important fights, and that's great. But I was looking at your Instagram. Man, you're bigger than he is. So either he just completely became a marathon runner and tapered down or something, or you cut a lot of weight, brother. Uh, I think it's – he he's solid. I think you guys – I'm taller than he is. But, uh -huh. man, it, it's funny. He was showing my wife a move the other day on the cage, and he was like, hey, Grant, come here. Let me – and he, like – picked me up and like flex and I felt how strong that dude actually is. And it was just like, man, that is a man. Like, holy cow. He has not <laughs> lost a step. I promise. Nice. Yeah. He, um, he was a stud back in the day for those that don't know. And you know what, to be fair, so was Mike Brown, former WEC champion. Mm -hmm. he, he, everybody think most people nowadays think of him as just that's coach Mike Brown. Well, no, he was WEC and UFC veteran Mike Brown who holds a major belt too. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that is so great about American Top Team. And I think it was one of the things that I was missing in my old gym is my coaches now have been where I want to be. You know, uh, I know that um, Tiago Alves came up a little short, but dude, he was fighting George St. Pierre, the, the consensus best welterweight on planet Earth, you know, and there's no shame in losing to that guy. The guy has beat legend after legend. He got a title fight. That's what I want. Mike Brown as well. I consider that the WEC was the UFC for that time because yeah. they didn't have the weight class in the UFC. And then when UFC bought them, they just moved it over. So in my mind, Mike Brown is also a UFC champion. It's one of those things where it's like, I'm, I'm now being coached by people that have done what I'm trying to do. So I know I'm in good hands. Yeah, no, you know your history, that's for sure. Dominic Cruz, Jose Aldo, you know, those guys were killing it over there, and eventually they moved over. And and then shout out to Benavidez and, and Demetrius Johnson, you know, adding to the man and weight division. But in reality, they were flyweights. And then the UFC finally opened the gates to the real proper 125ers. So um, good stuff here. Okay, listen, listen, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't want you to think I'm being cute or nothing. You moved from Glory Fitness to ATT before what happened to Glory Fitness last year. Um, I don't believe you can chime in that that move was it had anything to do with that. But basically, you did what a lot of those fighters had to do, and that's just look for a new home. Um, can you tell us, like, you're, what, what, what was your reason for leaving back then? Because I think this was about a year before that you left or, or six months. Uh, it all seems to have worked out fine. You, you look like a happy guy in the pictures that I saw or whatever. And I'm not trying to throw shade at the other gym at all. That gym had some success. They just happened to run into a big problem, and, and that's that. But what, what can you talk about about that and these stuff, you in a relationship with anyone over there? Yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. And, like, I think it goes a little bit deep. Like, not, like, legally wise, but just the drama that is going on, you know, with the former glory MMA and fitness guys is absolutely insane. If you're keeping a, uh, keeping an eye on like Tim Elliott and what's going on with his story and just all this stuff, it, it's one of those things where if, if my life or, or if glory MMA and fitness was a TV show and we threw in all of the things that, that have been going on there, you would say, oh, the ratings must be down, and they're just trying to make the show exciting again because there's no way all of this stuff is happening. This is real life. Glory MMA and fitness is kind of the new Tiger King. And one of the things is, like, I, I tell people all the time, like, James has been nothing but a good person to me. James James and I, in my book, we're solid. Like, he, he's a good guy. He's always been good to me. He's always been uh, somebody that I – I considered a friend back in the day and you know, we, we aren't as close as we were obviously, but he's somebody that I, I really hope that these things get figured out and it, I don't know what's going on. I just, you know, hear things, but it, it sounds like it's, it's about to get figured out. And I, I think that he'll be on a good end of it. So, um, you know, that, that whole thing going on, I had nothing, it, it had nothing to do with me moving. Um, I had a really close fight with Leonardo Santos and I bonused and, 
in my head, I thought that I needed to make a change in my, in my heart. I knew I needed to leave the gym and find a bigger gym and find a new pond to try to, to be a part of. But instead I took the coward's way out and I bought a house with that 50 K and then I had a co-main event spot on a card much like this one against Ricky Glenn, who I was a minus 550 favorite against, and I dropped the ball. I went to a, a draw with him, and it was just the straw that broke the camel's back. It was the, the sign that I needed. It was the, the thing that I needed. Um, and so I, I decided that I was going to make a move after that fight. And then it's actually a re- it's not a crazy story, but kind of a, a cool story about how I ended up at American Top Team. But I'm so glad that it happened. It had nothing to do with everything going on. And then after I left, things kind of went crazy, but it had nothing to do with me. And this happens with fighters all the time. They get a look somewhere. (laughs) Sometimes it's permanent. Sometimes they come back. I've seen Tim Elliott here in Vegas at Extreme. Then I've seen him back at Glory. I've seen Julian Marquez as well, you know, uh, over at Syndicate and and, and, uh, Extreme. So this happens quite commonly, you know, and I don't think there's any problem with you looking out for yourself, and I'm glad you kind of cleared out the timeline. Uh, us as well. We always had a great relationship with James. Hopefully, it does work out for the best for everyone. Until we get all the facts, we really won't know how any opinions to give other than just what was in front of us, you know. But um, listen, Grant, hey, it's always a blast talking to you. 20 minutes went by like that. 18 of them were on ranking. Sorry about that. But <laughs> is there anything else you want to talk about, you know? Because, again, let's lift the profile of this co-main event it's a big one and like go said you know what do you what are you thinking you already told us what you, you want one more maybe two more in in uh 2023 i think we might be pushing it a little bit although all bets are off you've seen what kevin holland did uh, a few years ago he did five in like 200 days yeah that's insane man he, he's got to be making good money and and to fight that many times that's insane i i, I think i'm only going to get one more in this year um the, the inactivity since I joined the UFC has just been, it's just been, it's a part of, it's a part of the life now. You know, um, I make a lot more money than I made outside the UFC so I can afford not to fight every couple of months, but uh, I definitely want to keep busy, but I just don't see it happening. I think I'm going to beat Demir and I think I'm going to have one of the best performances of my career. And I don't think it's going to be easy to find me a fight after that. So I'm just hoping that we can get something done before it's another nine months. I, I hate these long layoffs. I had a long layoff in between Jared and, uh, and uh, Matson as well. And it was just one of those things where the Matson fight ends up happening, but hey, it's on two weeks notice. And it was just one of those situations like, man, I can't say no to this fight. I've been begging for a fight. So let's, let's, let's take it. Um, I am definitely not going to risk taking a short notice fight unless I know for 100% fact that my body can make the weight though. So that is the one thing that's going to be different this time. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm sure you will. If you're already telling us the next one's going to be done by Thursday, it sounds like you've you've made some sort of a, of an adjustment, and this will be slam dunks going forward. Um, thank you, Dan uh, Grant, for the time today. We really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully we can again chat with you after this fight, before the next one. We always enjoy the combo. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much.